The day is finally here where the Evo is back home. So right now, I just kind of want to show you guys what it's looking like before we end up moving it right towards over there. Or we need to have a conversation, but uh, here is what the interior was left like. Basically, right when we took it to the paint shop. So the interior is taken apart. I do want to show you guys the engine bay. Kind of hard to see no lights in it but it just looks way cleaner guys way cleaner Have y'all ever played Tetris? Cause I for sure didn't. I might have to make a second trip, honestly. This is, damn, way too much stuff. I still have the intercooler, radiator left. I don't know what other parts from the Evo are there. I have the full turbo back exhaust that goes all the way. Still have the front mount, which I think I'm gonna end up getting a new one. And then I already went ahead and got a half rad because you have to run a half radiator for the forward facing setup. So this is for sale, hit me up. This I think is just the ETS regular size Megan Racing Evo 89 radiator. Those batteries suck, do not get these. As soon as you let them discharge, they're done for. I've already gone through like four. At least we have most of the stuff in the car and uh, we're ready to go. Here is what we're working with. So let's go over the parts. If you guys see anything that's missing, you guys let me know. Um, hopefully we have everything. Uh, we have the transfer case, oil cooler, Cusco brace, one of the radiator fans. We also left the radiator and intercooler core at the storage. I see the input shaft for the transmission. Looks like an AC line, power steering line master cylinder i see the oem axles which are for sure gonna have to get rebuilt um definitely won't, don't want to put these on and you know have them just break later so intercooler piping front cross member with the mount which we're going to be replacing from bumper uh brace which i've only heard that they're only good up to like five miles per hour so they're not really useful um cross strip bar intercooler piping speed density intake 
think these are like the ABS unit in lines. These go on the firewall. Um, what else? I see the brake booster, reservoir, uh, power steering reservoir, hoses. I see all the bolts. Hopefully we have everything we need. We also have the JDM headlights and front bumper. And I also have the engine over here. Let me go show you guys. We got the 3000 GT in DSM just hanging out. <laughs> it's kind of cool because I finally have all three cars in the same location. So it's been a while. Hopefully soon we get like a picture or video with all three of them. Here I have the OEM Evo 9 4G63 completely untouched. It's definitely gonna need a nice cleanup because it's been sitting here for a very long time. We're gonna go ahead and refresh it, go over the gaskets, change everything over. I do have to go ahead and get the um, engine hoist. I have to buy one. And then we'll put it on an engine stand, look over everything, clean it up. Definitely start switching some things up. All right, so we're about to have one of those rare road talks with a Miguel DSM. Um, I came inside the car for one, just I just wanted to feel what it felt like again. It just feels absolutely amazing. And I am just extremely grateful, first of all, just to be able to have the opportunity to own an Evo and to build one. Uh, second of all, I'm in here because they're doing construction in the rear here behind me. And uh, I wanted to be outside, but I just couldn't, you know, really talk to you guys and you guys would be hearing a lot of things, you know, in the background. So um, I think this will be a lot better. I kind of just wanted to talk to you guys in regards to how much this Evo build actually means to me. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are gonna relate because you guys probably have very similar situations. So um, I'm sure a lot of you guys as car enthusiasts, um, sometimes we just simply cannot afford to modify a car, to buy a car, et cetera, right? The Evo for me has always been the car that I've wanted to build since I've owned it, uh, but I've never had the opportunity just due to lack of funds. Let me tell you guys the full story about the Evo before we start because I think it's very important and at least you guys kind of have the background with it uh, before we move forward with this uh, build. Uh, I, this is probably going to be the most extensive modifications that I've done to this Evo and I'm aware that there's a lot of Evos out there that just have a lot more done a lot more money into them uh, but I'm not rich I'm not I'm not here to have the best car or have the best modifications or have the most money invested I'm here to build uh, my cars at my pace and I'm here to document everything and I'm here to show you guys that at the end of the day I'm literally just one of you guys if I'm putting myself on YouTube doesn't make me any better than anybody it's just the fact that I'm just I'm sharing my experiences I'm trying my best to uh, buy and modify this car at my pace and honestly it's been very hard for me uh, over the last like eight years that I've owned it um, so the full story with the Evo uh, I used to daily drive my motorcycle to college I went to Cal State Fullerton out here in SoCal and I would daily drive my Honda CBR 600 RR so um, unfortunately I just had a really bad accident with that bike um, I was on the 57 freeway uh, if you guys are familiar with SoCal, I uh, was basically splitting lanes right next to the carpool lane and everything traffic was flowing. We're going like 75, 80. Uh, I don't know where this AT&T van driver guy um, merges like right in front of me and I have to brake like immediately. And if you guys ride bikes, you guys understand that if you smash on the brakes, whether it's the front of the rear one, uh, you're going to lock up the bike. So the bike immediately locked up on me and i ended up just i felt the bike just literally fall on its face like i just i just felt myself get thrown down and i was going like 70 miles per hour so i landed on my left knee i landed on my shoulder and then i remember just like hitting my head and scraping for a little bit and just like literally rolling on the freeway with the bike right behind me just like spinning out right and it was kind of crazy because in that moment all i can remember is just like I felt the impact and everything was blurry. Once I hit my head, like I kind of like slightly had like a concussion, like I, I blacked out a little bit. And then a second later I'm back, right? And I, and I just see around me, and I'm like, what did you, like what just happened? And I got very lucky because in situations like that, for those of you that ride, understand that if you crash on the freeway, bro, like it's very, very risky because you get run over um, or just simply die. If you hit the, the meeting diviner or, or, you know, if someone hits you, it's, it's, it's a very high risk and it's a very high chance that you're just gonna end up, you know, either getting hurt, disabled, um, or just dying so i was very blessed i only ended up with a torn acl on my knee because that was the primary point of impact and a slight concussion so I had to get surgery and 
I was out for like two months. I was with crutches and I basically needed a car to daily drive back to school. So I had the DSM and I was barely undergoing the Evo swap at the moment. And I just thought to myself like, what's the next best thing to the Mitsubishi Eclipse, right? Uh, I started looking around for some Evos. Back then, they were a lot more accessible. They were like 10,000 to 20,000, depending on condition. Of course, eight, nine, 10, big difference. Um, I found this uh, Evo 8, Apex Silver, out in a dealership in Santa Ana. And I was like, you know what? I This is the color I want. I don't mind if it's an eight or a nine. I, I just wanna make sure it's one either or. And I was like, I'm gonna go tomorrow. So next day I go to the dealership out in Santa Ana and this Evo specifically, they literally just like bring it in. It had just come in and I was like, you know, what's the deal with this one, right? And it was $1,000 more expensive than the eight, but it had teen coilovers, it had XXR wheels, it had no wing, intake, full exhaust, blow out valve. It was slightly modified per se, uh, but it was lower miles and it was a nine. So I was like, you know what? Long term, I think this car is going to be worth a lot more. Graphite gray was my second choice. I wanted it to be silver because I wanted to match my Eclipse. Uh, but at the same time, I was like, you know what? Let's try something different. The graphite gray honestly looks very good on these cars. It's, I think it's the most aggressive color. Anyways, I talked to the, to the sales guy and we go over numbers and I had a good credit. So I was able to get that thing on payments. I was paying like, I think 430 at the time monthly payments on it and uh i really couldn't afford to like make the payments and then modify the car so the evo was just literally like my daily driver i kept it basically the same for a very long time and it's the car that i've been modifying on the side you know little by little as much as i can and you know eventually we got it to a good point you know full boltons 85 made 400 on the first tune that thing was super quick it was a very aggressive tune i was keeping up with like 600 horsepower camaros um Eventually, uh, my transmission gave out. I was grinding the synchros and it was just really, really hard to shift. I got the build trans and then a twin disc clutch. And then I took it to Irwin though, the drag strip, launched the car, blew first gear out and it bummed me out. The, the video's still up there if you guys want to look it up. I blew first gear and ever since then, I was like, I want to pull the car apart and I, I want to do things right. I want to pull the engine out. I want to do the, you know, paint the bay and, and go forward facing right with a bigger turbo. So that's always been my long-term goal. Um, just due to life circumstances, which I'm gonna go over right now, um, the Evo has taken a lot longer than I expected. All in all, I mentioned this because the Evo has always been, at least for me, the car that has been behind the scenes. It's the car that I've never really learned to appreciate as much as I do now because I've always had the Eclipse on top. Like to me, the Mitsubishi Eclipse, my Mitsubishi Eclipse has always been my favorite car. I think it, it always is gonna be, is gonna be my day one, like my favorite car. You know, I think we all have that one car that's like better than everything else, even though the Evo is technically a better car. Uh, but the Evo to me has always been kind of like the behind the scenes, I'll modify it when I can and, you know, just kind of have it there, right? Uh, but now just based off what I've been going through with it over the last like two years has really, I, I've really learned to appreciate it. And, and now this car means a lot more to me, this build, means a lot a lot more to me and and i kind of want to tell you guys this now before we go into the building process because i believe that every person in every car has a story and i think it's very crucial um for you guys to know how much this means and how i, I could already feel myself just driving it being completely done and i know i'm going to be extremely happy because it's something that i've been aspiring for since i bought it right i just i've never really been able to afford it it's not really smart especially as we grow older i feel like we start having more responsibilities and you know some of us have kids we have a significant other and i think cars just stop becoming our priority right so to an extent i feel like it's a financial mistake i should have just left the stock just should have left it alone and just enjoyed it uh but part of me just you know i want to build my dream evo and i think this is this is what it stands for so i'm gonna go ahead and uh you know, make the make the investment to purchase all these parts, document as much as I can. And it's kind of crazy because the whole situation with the car was, you know, we took it apart at my buddy's house where I was renting out, right? And then we took everything out and, you know, he had to sell the house, so I had to leave. And then I took the car, basically me and my ex-girlfriend, we were living together. I had my Evo with her Evo there and then I had the engine there, had all the parts. I took some parts to storage and everything started getting scattered, bro. And I was just like, it, it was stressing me out to an extent, right? Because I, I realistically, I didn't have the money to build this car at the, at the time. And I, and I did it anyways, right? I was like, I want to do this eventually and and, and I'm just going to do it. Uh, I'm going to be going with a Precision 5858 uh, ball bearing. And then I already got the OEM timing kits, uh, Torque Solution motor mounts, HKS cam gears, uh, I think Kill 4 272 cams. 
uh, springs and retainers, I think Kigley, and uh, ARP head studs and just a bunch of things, right? So I'm, I'm going to be, you know, paying up all, I'm sure a lot of you guys do this all the time, but for me, dude, it was, it's been very tough because it's just spending thousands of dollars into a car just like that. It, dude, it hurts, it hurts because, you know, I'm not the richest kid on the block, bro, honestly. Like, as, as far as me being a YouTuber and and you see all these content creators with all these sick builds and, and they're building them like crazy, like, nah, man, I'm just like every single one of you guys. Like, sometimes we just can't afford and we gotta wait till we get the next paycheck. Um, but I'm building at my pace and I'm proud of myself for that, bro, because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm very resilient when it comes to, like, if I put my mind to something as far as finishing it, I'm always gonna do it. I did it with a DSM and I can do it with the Evo. So I feel like building this Evo, hopefully with a couple buddies, I'm able to kind of get back into that flow and, and really get back into what started this channel, which was building Mitsubishi. So I, I, di I do feel like I lost, you know, part of my roots when it comes to the channel as far as like building the cars, but um, it's definitely coming back. So, and all I got to say is I'm grateful. I'm very grateful that I was, I'm actually going to be able to somehow afford these these parts that i need to finish the car and a lot of it has to do with you know a lot of you guys that support by buying merch by buying hoodies by buying shirts by buying jet tags every little thing that you guys do for me honestly helps whether you believe it or not and i honestly appreciate you if you've ever bought anything for me or if you've ever even commented on a video bro like honestly anything helps so yeah man i'm just this car means a lot more to me and and this build stands for something it stands for even though when life hits you bro and even though you feel like you're not going to finish it it's going to end up turning into a project that's just never ending um you got to pull through with it bro and i'm here to tell you guys that if you know if you don't feel motivated or if you feel like you just don't have the finances to finish off your build you know keep doing your thing and hopefully one day you, you reach that point right so i'm going to be building on my pace guys i'm not going to be you know dropping videos every other day like you know all these other youtubers um I'm, I'm I'm just the kid with an Evo that's trying to build it on the side, right? So, I don't know, man. I just wanted to talk to you guys in regards to just, you know, the whole situation with the Evo. And, and I'm, I'm always going to be authentic in regards to, like, what's going on. And if I just can't afford a part and I got to wait three weeks and I can't make a video, for, like, you know, for the Evo for you guys in three weeks, and it is what it is, right? I'm not here to put myself in a situation that I don't want to be in just because I have the need to post something, right? So I think that's very important, especially if you're making content. Um, build at your pace, build how you want, build for yourself, don't build for other people. This is honestly, I've been, this has been my e dream evil build for years and uh, I'm still gonna build it on my pace, bro. Like I don't have all the parts and honestly, it, it might take me a while. I don't know how long this build is gonna take me, uh, but I'm very excited. All right, guys, so quick little vlog with Evo. I'm honestly very, very happy. It's gonna be a short vlog, but it's a very important one. Uh, when it comes to building cars, build at your pace, little by little. Next thing you know, it's it's going to be done. I do feel a little bit overwhelmed. I still wanna make sure that I have everything. I think we're gonna go ahead and focus on uh, getting the engine over here, uh, putting on the engine stand, and then doing the OEM timing belt, water pump, all that stuff, the timing done. Pull the valve cover, get that powder coated, build the head, ARP head studs start swapping turbos um, basically have the engine prepped and ready before we slap it on right so i do want to clean all the parts and then i guess we'll just start figuring out where everything goes little by little when you start taking things apart like to this extent um you start losing things so i'm a little bit concerned about that but it'll get done in due time so super happy any suggestions like i said comment section below uh, besides that, I'll go ahead and leave you guys here. Stay tuned for another Evo update video coming soon once I have the parts here in hand. I am going to be going back to Mexico after track day, so probably when I come back, there's going to be another one. So, slow and steady wins the race. I'm not here to build it right away. I'm here to enjoy the process and build it and uh, enjoy it after it's done. So, stay tuned. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.